Uh, hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here, and welcome back to another crypto video. And right now, as you can see, we have $2,081 in DOT, and I want to know from you guys, should I sell this and buy some other coin, or should we keep it in DOT? This was actually $1,000 the 4th of January or so. And I asked you guys what I should buy. A lot of you guys were saying buy Polkadot, buy Polkadot, buy Polkadot. I did and we doubled it now. So again, give me a suggestion. Should we hold or should we buy something else? Let me know in the comment section down below. And by doing that, you're also automatically entering into our $100 crypto giveaway. That would give away the first time a video hits 1500 likes within 24 hours. As you only have to make sure you press the like button, are subscribed and comment something down below. Second option is actually to just put in another thousand dollars and I guess just buy another coin and just show you guys that it is possible to make money even if you don't have too much. Because here in this case, it is just about the percentage, not about the amount. As again, we've just doubled the money that's in this account in, let's see here, about 13 days, right? Which is definitely quite cool if you were to ask me. Now, I have quite a lot of things to show you guys here, as you can already see, but I want to start off here with false expectations, basically. It's actually this one right here from Hold Crypto. He says, thoughts? And it is a picture, right, of XRP logo and I guess a, a little, I don't know what what's the thing is called, maybe a skirt or something like that. I don't know what it's called in English, but I have no idea what you guys are smoking over there to think that this somehow makes sense or that this is really what's been going through people's minds but if you do all right you're probably a little bit too far-fetched you know for me probably cannot save you i'm very bullish on xrp but this type of stuff it is definitely not for me so let me know down below if you think this is all real if you think this is all connected or if this is really just <laughs> too far-fetched you know let me know in the comments down below what you think about it i personally think this is really stupid but hey maybe you guys are really serious about it and i'm just mistaken all right but uh it's definitely not my thing. I just wanted to quickly share that. This, however, is my thing. And again, I'm not trying to talk bad about XRP hold here. I'm just saying this is not my style. This, however, is very much so. It is a McDonald's worker here. One hour is $15 is 60 XRP. As right now, you can buy four for a dollar. Pretty crazy if you ask me. When XRP hits 589, that is $35,000 every single hour. And basically, the motivation here or the little text is persevere and i've said it way too often i think in my videos already it is all about perseverance if you sell the first time you make a little bit of money like all those guys did in 2011 pick something you would have left out a lot of money over the longer term and i personally am very convinced crypto is going to keep going up in waves as time moves on a little bit like this right here most people think trading or investing is easy and it keeps going like this not completely true all right it mostly looks like this but the journey really looks like this it says here don't fall in the fire pit you shall not pass roar volcano uh i guess pirate flag or basically flag uh devil face <laughs> i'm the foot monster and then what's next point being the whole market here doesn't work simply it's not just a you know oh we're gonna keep going up with small corrections like that it is, but that is a longer term. If you look at it from the bigger picture, this is most likely what markets like crypto and even the S&P look like. However, if you look at a shorter term and basically look at something to trade, it's going to be acting more like this and you're going to make a lot of mistakes. And that's why with a proven for yourself trading strategy, you will always make losses, but the wins should outweigh the loss. Basically, let's say you took three trades here. You took a trade right here, for example. You took a trade upwards. You lost it. However, you took the trade here again. You won. You took the trade here again. You won, for example. You could have, for example, had one loss, two wins. That is completely fine. As long as you, again, on average, are winning more than you're losing, that is still a winning strategy. You don't have to always win. However, while on this channel, I talk so much about just holding it through and being fine with that is because it's just so much simpler. You don't have to put so much extra effort into it and you can just let it be, let it sit on the side here and don't have to worry about the best entry. I told my old man, all right, actually he told me mostly, but all right, I told him about crypto. He told me, man, just give me some or let me buy some. I don't care what the price is. I just want to have some of these coins. 
And I told him, but don't you want to wait a little bit for a better price? He said, no, I don't want to wait. I don't care. I just want to have some coins and we'll see what happens. We're going to hold it for 10 years anyway. And that really got me thinking, yes, it might actually be a lot better to just hold on through and, and get the game, I guess, going on. We all know this whole process from the SEC is either manipulative to get people to sell XRP or to just bring up some controversy into the market or to make people sell, whatever. Since I'm a 10-year possibly holder, I don't care about a lot of this type of stuff. And even though, again, I might sell some other bags along the way. I know from all these Bitcoin pizza guys from 2011 and whatnot that I'm definitely not going to sell my whole bags if I'm not planning to buy it back. And even then, I'm never going to sell my whole crypto bag. I would definitely never in my life do that. Even if it goes to one cent, I would never sell it all. I might, however, again, take some profits out to get a different lifestyle, possibly. Let's say our crypto really goes to that 589, for example, that people have been hoping for. Not expecting it, but what if? Well, yeah, then at those points, right, you, you might have to take some XRP out. Let's say you right now have 1,000 XRP. That's then, you know, half a million dollars. If you want to take 50,000 out to live your life luxuriously or buy a car, go right on ahead, all right? I'm personally not going to take 100% out, but, uh, you know, you can do something crazy. John E. Deaton, the very popular lawyer, I guess, in the crypto community right now, who, I guess, went in against the SEC, has said, the SEC was warned investors would lose billions. Considering the magnitude of an SEC enforcement action against the third large digital asset, XRP, the SEC and its chairman, Jay Clayton, was sent a letter prior to filing of the action from former chief Joseph Grundfest. He warned Clayton and the SEC that the mere filing of the lawsuit declaring XRP an unregistered security would result in an unprecedented scenario of billions of dollars in losses resulting from an exodus of intermediary market service providers. And that's a direct quote from a former chief who saw all of this coming. The exodus of intermediary market service providers has already taken place. Coinbase, Kraken, and almost every other service provider has suspended trading or will suspend trading of XRP in the U.S., Others like Bitwise and Grayscale have liquidated their XRP holdings. Remember, XRP has been publicly traded in the US and even globally for seven plus years, with the SEC's full awareness and implicit permission. The SEC was aware that XRP was being actively traded on over 200 exchanges globally, including in the US. Clayton was warned by Grunfest that if the SEC initiated an enforcement action declaring XRP an unregistered security in present day, these exchanges would have no choice but to list or halt XRP trading from fear of an SEC action against them. Grundfest informed Clayton that he was aware of no instance in which the simple announcement of a commission's enforcement procedure has absent allegations of fraud or misrepresentation caused multi-billion dollar losses of innocent third parties in the SEC's complaint against Ripple, Brad Garlinghouse, and Chris Larson. There are no allegations of fraud or misrepresentation. Considering that no fraud was being alleged and the fact that XRP was allowed to be traded for over seven plus years, Grundfest pleaded with the or with, with Clayton stating, no pressing reason compels immediate enforcement action. But Clayton and the SEC ignored this grave warning despite billions and billions of losses to innocent investors. The SEC filed the most significant SEC case in modern history, which I think is true, considering no exigency existed and there was no immediate need to file this case. Grundfest himself questioned Clayton's and the SEC's true motive. He said applying existing security laws to XRP but not Ethereum calls into question if the commission's discretion, in short, Grundfest was saying, if today's XRP is a security, so is Ethereum. He was basically going on record and saying that not only did it not make any sense, but it would be fundamentally unfair for the SEC to file this action. He basically told Clayton and the SEC that if you file this case claiming XP is a security, it's because of other reasons, unrelated to the law, and Clayton and others were well aware that the mere filing of the enforcement action, not limited to specific distributions of XP directly from Ripple, but alleging that all XP constitutes securities, could prove to be a kill shot against Ripple and XRP. Considering the magnitude of this case, no one would think that Clayton and the enforcement chief <clears throat> would certainly want to see it through, but instead they both left the SEC forever. I thought about this for so long. 
I have. I have thought about this for like maybe like two hours or so. I just let it sit through my mind, just thinking about it, maybe three hours. And basically the conclusion I can make is it really makes no freaking sense. First of all, he's right in the sense that this is one of the biggest lawsuits in modern history, as literally what's going to happen in this lawsuit will affect every crypto from now on, because every lawsuit in crypto will always refer back to this first case, like Howie was the most important, I guess, security case with the whole uh, orange land, basically. We talked about the whole case before. In that same sense, I would say that this ripple will basically be, first of all, the newer test for securities, hopefully. But also, I guess, the, the kind of ground principle of what people are going to be using when really looking at these cryptos on whether or not they are security, regardless of whether Ripple wins or loses. However, Ethereum and Bitcoin, they took a really different approach on that one, uh, kind of deciding it was not a security. With XRP, they're going for the traditional Howey test, basically. It's really strange how they're doing that. And even then, it's really strange that they think it really uh, goes over and is a security following the test. As we can all conclude in a couple of different ways why it would not really suffice. Also, if you start to think about it, Ripple, in, in a lot of different ways, because it is just an open network here, and literally the XRP could have been given to anybody, it's not really them from the start, theoretically, even if you really look at the real theory behind it, then you can already disregard the whole suit. And even if XRP was being sold by the founders themselves, if you start to really think about it, they're in their right to do so. Would I like it? No. Uh, but are they in their right? Yeah, I would say so, actually, because, well, they're founders of a crypto. Every founder sells. Is that really strange? No. It's only Brad Gollinghouse as a CEO. You know, if he's gotten XRP for just operating there, he's gotten so much and he's liquidated all of it, you know, millions of dollars worth. All right. Again, we might have a little bit of a problem here from an ethical perspective, not from a securities perspective, though. But again, that's just my opinion on all these things. Unders has said, if this is true, then this really blows my mind. Uh, and by the way, I think everything was kind of clear reading through this. I read it all the way through because it's just a really important part. It's also really strange to think, why would they leave if this is so important for them that they have to you really get billions of dollars of losses to all these people? Anders has said, if this is true, then this really blows my mind. XRP represented as central bank currency, this would support my theory that Ripple is trying to position the XRP ledger to issue synthetic CBDCs on it. To add, I could see several private participants in one market issue, uh, issuing CSS CBDCs? I, I think just CBDCs, but alright. Uh, Gator Trader has said, you tell the lie enough times you actually start to believe it. It's a picture here of HSBC, distributed ledger technology in the capital markets, and on the side here we have an interesting part what are the most compelling use cases for dig distributed ledger technology in the capital markets? And you can see here, DLT can streamline end-to-end -end value transfers reducing costs, operational risks, and settlement periods. For example, Ripple's XRP ledger provides real-time cross-border settlements using tokens that represent central bank currencies. That is interesting, right? Because why did they, HSBC, put that in their report? Let me read it again. Ripple's XRP ledger provides real-time cross-border settlements using tokens that represent central bank currencies. Footnote 5. I should actually open the document here and quickly look at footnote 5 or whatever they're referring to right there. But that is really, really interesting to me. That, again, if you start to think about it, these guys, man, these guys, I've really been working on something in the background. We're just not noticing it. I think they're just not really showing it to us, but they're really working on something big, man. I just, I really have convinced myself that that's the case. But, hey, it's it's not, <laughs> it's not true that these guys are only interested in Bitcoin. I, I just keep denying it. I keep denying it. But what do you guys think? Let me know down below. Also, guys, um, I've been really excited about Polkadot. However, I want to know from you guys, actually, if you're buying or selling that one right now, because it's already so extremely high. And make sure you check out GSX. It is a gold-backed coin. You guys know about it. Ooh, I think this 21% bonus is right now going to go to a 20% bonus. Whilst you're watching this video, it is definitely a 20% bonus. But G GSX is basically the first growth coin. It is a gold-backed coin. And right now, they have a lot of rich land, gold, rich land, and gold. And since they'll be expanding that as time goes on, the backing of the coin should also go up. And right now, it's just $0.10 cents with a 20% bonus plus a 5% bonus using my link for purchasing. 
And again, if it hits some exchange, let's just say it hits 40 cents or so, it's a pretty high ROI for very short term. Again, it's a risk because you don't know how much it's going to be at. But I like the I like the risk, I like the gamble, and I'm hoping it's going to go big the first day it hits exchanges, but we'll see. Then again, the question pops up, is Ethereum undervalued or Polkadot overvalued? Well, I think the better question is, what is going on with these networks and why are they right now so extremely, extremely popular? Grayscale raises $700 million plus in a day, its largest daily asset raise ever. In Q4 of 2020, the company raised $3.3 billion across its crypto investment vehicles. Pretty damn huge, and right now, a lot of money. Uh, yesterday, Grayscale raised north of $700 million into its family of products. Memento for Q4 seems to be picking up speed into the new year. If you haven't checked out our four, or I guess Q4 2020 report yet, uh, 115 was also our largest single asset raise day ever. That's again from uh, the previous CEO or the new CEO. I always get these. No, the new CEO. And then Luke Martin, these Ethereum DeFi protocols will outperform Bitcoin. Uh, in terms of ROI, that could definitely be so. In terms of will they be very useful? Uh, I would say so, yes, too. In a different sense, will they be more, um, I guess, secure? I can't really say that. However, I've also said in one of my videos before, it's also about diversification, right? And Polkadot flips XP to become the fourth ranked crypto after price spikes 100% in less than a week. Polkadot has been going crazy. Uh, it might really stay above XRP for a little while too. It mostly depends on what's going to happen to XRP in the short term. Even though I know the fundamentals are correct, it really may be so that people don't value it that way. I think it's really some BS going on, but hey, we cannot prove it. All we know though is this is really strange. That that really, HSBC knows they're building something crazy on there too, which they're not acknowledging. I really, I really thought about that one for a good while as well. And this one, the perseverance, how really important it is. And even though... Again, I don't necessarily know whether or not it's going to hit $589. And I'm not saying you guys should think about that. I specifically don't think you guys should really follow these riddles or things that really seem out of the ordinary or crazy. Maybe not out of the ordinary, but just crazy, crazy. However, you know, sometimes it is good to think like this. Like, okay, I'm working one hour right now. I'm earning $15, $20. I can buy this much crypto or I can invest this much. In a couple of years, I'll have this much then. If you really have a mindset like that and persevere, it really might pay off because trust me, guys, when when I say that 99% of the people don't have that 99% of the people are like, OK, I earned this much, which means I, I can pay all this and I have this much left for some cool stuff. And if I if I don't want that much cool stuff, I might invest something. If you have a mindset of, OK, I'm going to work right now, I'm going to earn this much, I'm going to invest that much. Eh, eh, it's going to get you so far in life. At least I personally think it, it's it's really working. I can almost guarantee that that's going to get you a lot further in your life than a different approach of, eh, I'll work, I'll see what happens, I'll invest some if I have some left. But hey, that's just me. All right, that's just me. That's my personal style, whatever. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe and let me know what you think about the lawsuit and how stupid it actually is. Or do you guys think it's fair? Let me know. See you guys again in another one.